Thanks for giving me the graveyard shift, yeah. So I'm between you and the bar, or your next 100 emails, yeah, whichever you prefer. So I'll try and make it as uh, painless as possible. Uh, as David just said, yeah, I jumped last, last time I spoke on lean leadership, I was in the group role for GKM for lean, been rolling that out for eight years, and I jumped back into one of the divisions uh, to lead lean there, a bit more hands-on to actually prove this stuff works. Uh, with one of our leadership teams. So I was working and reporting directly to the CEO and coaching the executive team on the sort of how to integrate lean into the strategy and deploy it to the organization. So some of what I'm gonna go through today is the experiment of uh, doing that. And I've learned a lot. Uh, I've made a lot of mistakes as well. So hopefully you guys can uh, learn from that as well and not make the same mistakes. Uh, but we'll see what you think. So, uh, I have to do the company bit first. Uh, GKM's been around for a long time, 250 years. In fact, we celebrated our birthday with Guinness. Uh, it was a combined celebration. <laughs> it was very good. And uh, uh, we've got four major divisions, our sort of uh, aerospace uh, division that makes uh, composite structures that make it all for the A380 uh, sort of wing spars. And uh, we have a driveline division that uh, makes sort of uh, driveline uh, widgets, really. For virtually all the cars, if you're, you're on a, in a car today, you're going to have one of our components on. The same with the powdered um, uh, metallurgy division. Uh, basically what powdered metallurgy is, it's uh, smolted metal, we blast water at it, make a powder, we then press it into a near neck shape and it avoids all the machining and is very strong. Um, we use that in automotive components, we also use it now in aerospace components as well. Uh, my division, the smallest division, uh, is land systems uh, division. And uh, what are these guys about? Well, we make driveline systems, basically taking power from something and applying it to something else through drive shafts, clutches, couplings, and brakes. Not very sexy, but that's what we do. We have 25,000 different customers to do that. Uh, basically, we have a whole range of customers from uh, a farmer bringing in his broken prop shaft, and we have to repair it, to maybe John Deere, where we're serving major sort of agricultural platforms. So that gives you a little bit of a scope of GKM. And I apologize for the guys who are already in my uh, group this morning, because you're hearing the same thing again. Yeah. Okay, so a little bit of background on, G, uh, on GKN and our lean role. And uh, when I was in the group role, uh, I started off actually in the automotive division as best practice director. I think really it was more finding any practice, yeah. But uh, we sort of evolved our lean approach and I got asked to take up the group role. And uh, we started off, uh, as we said, with a sort of simple approach. And it was a very different culture. I came out of an automotive uh, company after 15 years into GKN. Very, very different culture. I thought it was going to be the same and it wasn't. And uh, what I found was we hadn't really done lean. GKN was being very successful, made a lot of money and there was no need for improvement. Uh, when I went around the first seven plants in driveline, couldn't, I couldn't see the basics. There was no standard work in place, no lost time analysis, all of the basic stuff that you would expect in lean, it wasn't in place. So we started this journey off. Uh, how did we do that? Yeah, well, first of all, we put a support structure in place. So we put steering committees, uh, our management team, we all had to have a CI plan, they all got some training. Uh, we had continuous improvement leaders. We trained up nearly probably 1,500 of them now. Uh, over the organization. Uh, also, we have business process leaders as well that we put in place. And then we started out on this sort of epic approach of training. And we have spent millions of pounds, and David uh, is one of, one of the guys that uh, helped with that training. We had a central group that rolled out uh, training programs. We have a, a year-long program for site continuous improvement leaders where they learn by doing, okay? We have what we call a master continuous improvement leader program, which is all of the senior executives, including the CEOs, have been on it, three weeks of training and learning by doing in between. We have a business process excellence for uh, functional managers, where they go on three weeks of training, they have learning by doing as well. So we spent literally millions of pounds over the sort of uh, last eight years doing that training and rolling it out. And from that, as uh, previous conferences, I've sort of put up there all the good things that we've done. And we've had some excellent results from that all over the group, yeah, from China to America to Europe, even here in the UK. Yeah. So we've had some great results, but I'm not going to show you those today. And 
what I thought, going into a new division, it was a great time to have a reflection about what we'd done. And uh, Mr. Ono here you know, taught us to reflect, and I think it's a really good thing to do, and we don't do it enough. One of the A3s, one of the uses of A3s is to do a reflection. So if we do a reflection on where we are, on our lean leadership, and what the reality is, that's what I'm going to take us through today. Uh, a bit of reflection on what we've done in GKN. But that starts off understanding about what do we mean by lean leadership. I want you to watch this video now. Uh, and there's two questions I want you to have uh, in mind, yeah? The first one is, is this work purposeful, yeah? Is that person doing purposeful work, meaningful work? And has his leader spent the time developing his problem-solving skills? Okay, so I want you to think about those two questions as you watch this short video. Well, this is a cheese factory in America. Really low scrap rate. Yeah. Okay. So, was that purposeful work? No, no, it wasn't, was it? Yeah. Did their leader give them problem solving capability, you think, there? Solve that problem? No. So, was, the, was that person's leader respectful? Why is that? We've made the work hard, haven't we? Yeah? It's not meaningful. Nobody wants to do not meaningful work. And, you know, that leader's disrespected that person. They've made the work difficult, yeah? Okay? And we also haven't given them problem-solving capability to solve that problem. Yeah. So now, not everything is as obvious as that, yeah? But we still have that as leaders in GKN. I went to a site uh, not long ago looking at uh, a machining process. Uh, and the guy is there uh, putting a casting in, aligning it to machine the face of it. And he's doing it with the door open because it isn't quite right. Uh, and he's having to rework every other part. Now, it's not as obvious as that. And it was built into the work. But we're still being disrespectful to that person. Why? A, for one, it was dangerous because he was actually lining the part up with the guard off because he couldn't see it because the glass was dirty. So we had a safety issue. But all these small things uh, mean we're being disrespectful for people. We've made the work harder. And also, as leaders, we're not given the capability to solve that problem. We're not supporting them. Yeah. So, you know, that's what we think lean leadership really means. Yeah? Respect for people yeah, and give them the capability to solve problems in their workflow. OK, so bearing that in mind, you know, what was that reflection that we had in uh, sort of GKN? So the first thing is, is, we've done millions of pounds worth of training <laughs> in GKN. Yeah? But what is training? It's a point in time, isn't it? Yeah? We go on a course, and our courses are you know, fairly good. Must be. Dave Marriott invented half of them. Yeah? So, and he was from Toyota, so they must be good. But it's a point in time. Yeah? And we do learning by doing on our training. But to get real deep understanding of solving problems, and no doubt you heard that in Mark's uh, workshop as well. It takes time. We have to practice it. You heard of the Carter story of practicing the routines to improve. Uh, this is the same. So it takes real time to do that. And we'd had mile-wide training that was an inch deep. So no wonder the leaders weren't going back and sort of using it and focusing on it. Also, leaders weren't using the training that they got. Some of them, yeah, we had great examples. Some site leaders out of the, you know, uh, you know literally thousands of leaders we've got, some have got great examples of leading it, doing it with our people. You go to another site, and it doesn't look like they've started. Why was that? Well, because of the, they were too busy doing the day-to-day -day firefighting. So they didn't use the improvement bit. 
and we haven't got stability. I'll talk about that a little bit more. Next one is just heard uh, Jaeger there that uh, a lot of people were making improvements uh, in the uh, land system division that weren't connected at all to the uh, strategy. Uh, uh, we got everybody's continuous improvement plan in the first time when me and Dave sort of asked them, what, what are you working on? They all sent it in, and it was nothing to do with the strategic goals for the, the company. Why? Because we hadn't made it clear to them what the goals are, uh, and we had no process to do that. So in the absence of that, they made it up themselves. You know? And some of them were doing some good things, but it was just the wrong things, the wrong problems to solve. Next one, then, is poor accountability. This is something that uh, we struggle with. We talk about the people side of it, but there is an absolute discipline side in lean. Yeah? We need to make people accountable, but to be accountable, you have to have a clear system, don't you? Clear metrics, clear targets, clear role, and what's expected of you. We didn't have any of that in this division. We had very little poor checkout. We'd start out on a lot of different things and never follow it up. Or if it went off target, we would never adjust it to get back on track. <coughs> and the last point then was on uh, people and process development. It was still a priority. It was a, still a low priority. Yeah? For some reason, leaders didn't want to go out and develop people. Yeah? They found it very difficult. You know, some of them didn't want to do it, didn't want to stay in their offices. Yeah? Other people just didn't have the confidence for it. A lot of people were doing the firefighting. So it was still a low priority yeah, because we were a very, very budget-driven, numbered organisation. And we'll, we'll talk a bit about that in a minute. So if you take the sort of reality of all of that, what is the diagnostics on that? Yeah? OK, so if we're in the doctor, what's the sort of root cause? What was the, the, the sort of problems that we've got to solve here from a leadership stance? Well, the first one is... Uh, I rushed in, joining the division. I was really excited. Thought, yeah, I'm going to show these guys how to do lean in this division. Yeah, it's great. Oh my, here's my A3, and I think I even showed it to Jim and Dan. I was so excited. This is what we're going to do. This is the answer, yeah. Uh, that lasted about two minutes, yeah. Because the first thing is we didn't have stability. The guys were all busy firefighting, and we were asking them to make improvements. You went into some plants, we didn't know if we were winning or losing. They didn't know where they were. Next one was the role of Alina. Yeah? We described, we sent everybody out for training. They, they started to understand it. We spent eight years' worth of training. People understood why they need to improve now. They weren't practicing it so much, but at least they understood why. But the issue is we hadn't described leaders' role in a lean organisation. They did not know. They'd have, some of them had 30 years of being managing by number, management control. They did not understand their role as leaders in a lean enterprise. And we hadn't told them that. We'd just given them a load of tools and techniques. Off you go, figure that one out. The next point then was we still had a traditional top-down command and control management system. And it wasn't based on plan, do, check, act. It was mainly on a lot of do and a lot more do when it went wrong. Yeah? So we had a do system, no check act, and very little planning. And the last bit there was a slow progression on getting a deep understanding. I think some of you guys experienced Mark's workshop on problem solving. Was it easy? No? You think you'd have to practice that a bit to get it, and then to even coach other people? Now, to get a really good, deep understanding takes practice, doesn't it? Yeah, we're not going to get it from a little bit of training. I think you've probably realised that today, yeah? So, you know, that capability was slow. I was talking to Jim last night. There's only a few of us in the organisation that can coach at that level. We are not Toyota. We haven't got a load of managers coaching other leaders. So, in the absence of those coaches, what can we do? So those are the problems we're going to solve. So the rest of the presentation is on about trying to solve those problems and what are the countermeasures we put in place. So first one was management control. Uh, uh, this is partly to, to understand the difference between breakthrough activity that we heard with, like with Jaeger versus what is our daily management and our performance. Most of our sites that when we, me and Dave went to, and I think Ian in our workshop explained this as well, couldn't answer these four basic management control questions. Yeah? 
So how did we do yesterday? What's our plan for today? What's the status of our actions? Any issues for tomorrow? They had no system in place to answer those basic management control questions, yeah? And this is because, this is the start of our lean model, we haven't put the foundations in place. So we didn't have uh, accurate process data. If you haven't got data, you can't turn that into information. That information gives you which problems we need to solve. If you haven't got the problem-solving capability to solve them, you can't solve them. And then you can't get stable, capable, repeatable processes, yeah? So you don't hear much of that in the lean world, but this is the most important bit. If you haven't got that foundation and you start to try and improve, what's going to happen? Yeah, you're building on quicksand. You don't improve. You actually go backwards, yeah? And you confuse the organisation. I'll go into this a little bit more. But that foundation is absolutely key. Getting that data, turn it into information that we can use to solve the problems, to stabilise our processes, and then we can put the standards in place and improve from the standards, yeah? So to do that, what we did is we uh, created a standard for our guys, and uh, we've already talked, I think, uh, talked about Obeya centres. We've got a very similar thing. We call it SMAC, because uh, David's got a sense of humour. He wants to, wants to smack our leaders. Yeah. So it's a site management action centre. Not so sexy, but it's funny. Yeah, that's what's weird. So the site management action centre, we called it that because it requires action. Yeah? So are we winning or are we losing? Yeah? What are the problems we've got? What are we doing about them to get back on track? Yeah? What's the action that's required? Okay. So we have a standard to do that. We're still implementing that in our organisation. Uh, and I'll go through that a little bit more in a bit. So, then we can build the rest of our operational excellence model. So we're taking our triangle, yeah, this is the very top level in GKN, which talks about improvement in our business processes, in, in our, our manufacturing processes, and more with our people. This is the thinking behind that. So what do we mean by continuous improvement? It means these lean principles I'm not going to go into today, up here. It means that everybody is using those lean principles on a day-to-day -day basis in their work activity. So they're thinking and acting with those principles in mind. That's what we mean by continuous improvement. So from the cleaner to the CEO, they're all using and understanding those principles in their work activity. But they can't do that without having the foundation in place. Okay? So, the second question, remember we said, about leaders not understanding their role? Now, usually... We coach this with a flip chart, I was saying David on this, yeah? A flip chart, pens. This has tested my PowerPoint skills out, so just bear with me, yeah? So this is how we're now sort of describing what a traditional organisation is versus a lean organisation. It's something we've come up with in the last couple of years. It's sort of stolen off Toyota with their problem-solving view. And uh, it's just a way that's trying to describe to our leaders what the difference is and what their new role is in a lean enterprise versus a traditional one. So it starts off with the most important guys with the black suits on up there, yeah, the, lead, the execs, yeah? This is a traditional organisation, command and control. They control the guys in the, who've got the grey hairs just below them. We usually have a second line of leaders uh, in the organisation. Some have a first level of leaders as well. I think I was talking to Jim last night. A lot of organisations usually don't have as many of these first-line leaders. They usually got quite a wide span. And then we have the people who do the work. Okay? And uh, their work activities, you know, in an unlean world, sometimes are not so well-defined, are they? Yeah? The process isn't there, they're just doing work activities. And the process isn't well-defined. So what does that mean? We start getting problems, don't we? Things delay the work activities. We have handoffs between departments or the machine breaks down. You know, so we have issues with our flow of value uh, because the process isn't well defined. The people haven't got the capability. They're not supported well. So these fires start burning and there's lots of these little problems. You think the guys at the top see those problems? No, no. Well, more importantly, what about the customer? Does he experience those problems? I think Ian gave us a good example today. The DSA for his facility, when he started looking at that, was, was it 60-odd percent, Ian, was it? You know, we have up and down performance uh, because we've got all of these issues in our work activities. So 
What happens then? So these guys come down, the problem solvers, yeah? We're going to sort these fires out. Okay, the problem is, th there's a lot of these little problems that start building up, isn't there? Do you think those team leaders have the problem-solving capability to fix all of those problems? Do we give it them? Remember the example we've just uh, gone shown you in the video? No? Well, if they can't fix the problem, then who's going to fix them? Okay, and the fire gets bigger, the problem gets bigger, we stop the customer or something else happens. So then we really call in the big guns, yeah? So the next level of leaders come down and get involved in that. And of course, this never happens in your organisation, I'm sure, yeah? And the fires get even bigger, yeah? Uh, and this is then, you know, if it goes up to the CEO and he gets it from a customer, what happens then? You're all smiling, yeah, hell breaks there. Yeah, we get, everybody's going to, yeah, everybody's involved. They call every level of leadership gets involved. You get all those phone calls going on. Yeah, it's great, isn't it, yeah? Yes, yeah, so the fire rages, yeah? And we get more and more people involved in these problems from above trying to fix it all. And it probably started off with a little tiny problem at the bottom of the organisation. So, meanwhile, the fires are raging. We're trying to do all that firefighting, get all the senior leadership involved. Plus, the guys at the top are thinking, I've got to make my budget. Yeah? Uh, we call this Johnny Ball management. And uh, I'll have to explain this because we've got 25 different nationalities here. So... Johnny Ball, if you remember, for the English people here, was a yeah, British, uh, <laughs> was it in Scotland? I don't know. Was a, a TV presenter, a children's TV presenter, and the programme was called Think of a Number, and he was a sort of mad math scientist guy, yeah, and he did lots of experiments with math mathematics, yeah, and he had this catchphrase, sort of, think of a number. That's what some of our senior leaders do, we make a budget up, yeah, and then what happens to that, yeah? It's great, this budget plan's brilliant, yeah? What do they do? Well, they pass that down the organisation, don't they, yeah? Oh, okay. So this is gold, this is a uh, potion, isn't it, yeah? We pass that number down, yeah? And what do they do? Pass it down again to the next level until the poor guys at the bottom go, what the hell do we do that then, yeah? That's a great number. How do we do that one? Yeah, and then what happens there? These poor guys here, their list of things to do gets even longer, yeah? As well as the firefighting. So we get into these big, long action lists of things, yeah, to fix. So the culture that you kind of get from this sort of traditional management is command and control, firefighting, yeah? Driving just numbers, not process. Uh, I got uh, one of my CEOs once, uh, I got him really upset by saying, any idiot can ask for a number. He didn't like that. <laughs> Overstepped the mark on that one, yeah. But it, it is, I can ask for any, I can make a number up. It doesn't mean we're going to get it. It doesn't mean we understand what we need to do differently in our process to get that number. Okay, little focus on developing people. Why? Because the leaders are what? Too busy putting out all the fires, yeah? doing all the problem solving for everybody else. And then, you know, we, in that type of organisation, we end up being very tactical and not doing all the strategic stuff, yeah? which takes time yeah, to figure out and do. So this is the model that we use to try and describe to our leaders what we feel is traditional management that we need to get away from. So we call this turning the triangle. Yeah? So we want to turn that triangle upside down. So where do we start in a lean sort of management system? Where do you think we should start? Hmm? Customer. Customer. Yeah? So we've got under, what's that lean principle? Define value in the eyes of the customer, yeah? Understand what they want. That's what we want, yeah? So... Customer is king, isn't it? Yeah? And I, I like what Dan was saying this morning about actually extending that into the customer process and bringing them into our process to design it. I think that, that, that is absolutely key. So we start off understanding what the customer wants. We can define a value flow to that customer, can't we? So we have well-defined processes. To do that, we've got to involve the people, haven't we? So we've got the team members there. So they're the top now, not the bottom. Okay, so what is their role? 
Well, I think you meant, I think we heard it this morning. Our number one role is to do the work. To be able to do the work in a repeatable way, yeah, they need to be involved in creating the standard to do that so that we don't do it all differently and we all know what we're going to do today to do that work activity. Okay, we get problems with the work, those little fires. Things happen, don't they? Things change. You know, the machine breaks down or the computer doesn't work, things like that. So we need to problem solve. So we need to give them the capability to solve problems in that process to keep it on track on what it should be delivering to the customer. And more importantly then, the guys, we need to improve them process, yeah? And to do that, they need some targets, some very clear targets, which we can work towards. And that's the continuous improvement bit, that we can do small changes on a daily basis and supported to do that. So when they've got a problem, they need support. But they also, remember what I talked about, the discipline in the system, we need to check whether people are working to the standard, and we need to check people's capabilities as well to be able to do that, yeah? So the TWI stuff and all of those things that you learn. So the role of a team leader needs to be made clear as well. And from a continuous improvement stance, that's their role, isn't it? To coach the team towards achieving the targets. Yeah, so remember those ran random action lists? Let's tear them up. Let's have target-driven improvement. But to do that, we've got to have clear targets, haven't we, for the process. And what do we concentrate on the most? Results. Not on the process KPIs and what we need to improve on. Okay, so what's the role of a team leader? Well, it's to support the problem solving, number one, the team. Yeah, check acts on the process and people. Yeah, and, and coach towards the targets. And more importantly, spend the time developing the people to do those activities that we talked about, yeah? So that's their role in a lean world. Now, they've got clear, clear targets to do that as team leaders. They need supporting. They need check acting on. Now, this is where we get confused with things like leadership standard work. It means different things to different levels in the organisation. So as a... Uh, as a team leader, what are the kind of checks they're going to be doing more of? As a first-line team leader, what should they be checking more of? Following yeah, following the standards, seeing the process is working, yeah? They will check out on people and capabilities, but be less of that and more about the process and whether the process is on, on track, yeah? The further we go down the organisation, what should we be checking more on? So who's responsible for the process? The team leaders and the team. So what should the next level leaders be checking on more? The team ah. So we need to check out more on the people side, and the people systems and their roles. Are people doing the things they should be doing? Are they doing the management activities that they should be doing? What do, what, remember the old world where we just go down, firefight the process? In this world, we should be check acting on the people more and their roles. Are they capable of doing them? Are we coaching them to do those roles? So it's more the people side. And the higher up we get, the more people activities we should be doing. Now, in a lean world, remember, we've got a key business process leader. And that's what we described. It could be a value stream leader or... In my case, at the moment, we're heading up an RFQ process, so we have a key business process leader for RFQ. He has a process improvement team that improves that. So it's functional as well. Who supports those guys? The site leaders, yeah? Same again. They need a system to check out. It's more about the people now. See these lines? They go right down to the bottom. Why does a site leader need to go and talk to a team member? And some of them don't do in our organisation today. <laughs> Why does a site leader need to go and talk to a team member? Go see for what, though? What's the purpose? Yeah? The truth about what? Yeah? So, and what is he learning about that, then? 
So if he finds that someone isn't doing the job they should be doing, the team member doesn't know how to perform a task, or he's not doing something right, what, what does that mean? Yeah, so he doesn't, know, he doesn't understand the standard, he might not have been trained, so who hasn't done their role? Team leader. And if the team leader doesn't know that, who hasn't taught him to do that? Yeah, the first line leader. Which means the other site leaders haven't done their role as well, yeah? So we're going down, not to ask about the process. Yeah, we might ask process questions to understand, but we're going down with the thinking in mind that we're check acting on the people and their roles, not the process. Remember, it's their job to make sure everybody's clear about what their role is. So the further we go up, the more people orientated that is. Okay, so then we've got the senior execs going there, doing exactly the same. But that system of check out needs to be designed and connected at each level. And I'll show you what we've done in GKN to do that. Okay, when we come to the targets, that should come from the strategy deployment process, doesn't it, yeah? If it's passing clear targets down the organisation, we need to integrate that into our daily management system or have a strategic breakthrough project where we put special resources on it and pull people out to do it. So the role of execs is to make sure all of that is in place. And not only that, the system is there for them to allow to do it. Now, when my execs did that, and we went around the uh, CEO, the first of my previous CEO, we went around and he gave one of the manufacturing plants in Germany another list of 300 things to do from his little shop floor visit. On top of all the fires, all the improvement plans and everything else they had to do. Was that helpful? No. <laughs> But he thought he'd done his job by leaving them that list of... Yeah, did you not see all these things that were wrong? No, instead of saying, what do I need to support you on yeah, in this organisation? What are the problems you're having? Where are you with your continuous improvement plan? What are the resources? Where are you with your people development? Coaching the plant leader. So we need to think about these things and these roles in the organisation. Yeah, so if you're in a lean world... These are the types of behaviours and the traits of the sort of organisation. Yeah? So support the problem solving, daily management control, you know whether we're winning or losing at each level, driving process to get the results, not just looking at result numbers, developing people capabilities a priority and strategy and CI together. Yeah? So that's what we use to sort of coach people through that. And I'm sorry, usually we do a flip chart and it's a bit more interactive, so apologies for that. I hope my PowerPoint wasn't too bad. Okay, so how are we going to change this? I, I picked this off a lean blog somewhere. I don't know who did it. Maybe you guys can tell me. Yeah? But I thought it's quite good. There's one word I don't quite agree with it, but it sort of entrenches where we were. Yeah. The latest one from senior management I heard, and, and Dave Marriott's going to laugh now. Yeah, I think it's called uh, where they say you've got to step up yeah? as a leader. You've got to step up. Yeah. Try harder, step up, come on. You've got all these problems to solve, yeah? It's great. Yeah? Well, I think this is a real truth. I would say maybe the improved performance should be just sustained performance would be great. Yeah? So, if you think about uh, the management activities that we got, and I'll give you an example of our executive team uh, when I joined it. The first question I asked, uh, we've got nine members of my executive team, and I asked each one of them, what, when we turned up to our two-day executive meeting each month, what is the purpose of that? And I asked it them individually. And for some reason, we got nine different answers. I don't know why that was, but we got nine. We didn't even know why we were turning up to the meeting. We didn't know what we should be bringing. All we knew is that we brought our little own PowerPoint version of what we thought we had to report out on. And most of that was focused on what? The, num the financial numbers, by any chance, yes? Was it all connected to the goals and the strategy? No. Did it check on anything on the people activities, that information? No. 
In two days, we didn't manage to do three items on the 20 item agenda. Usually, the finance guy spoke, the operations guy, because we had loads of problems, yeah, and uh, the CEO, if he was lucky. Yeah. Every other function in that meeting never spoke. HR never said anything. Not accountable. Why shouldn't they be accountable? Just the same as operations and everybody else. So what we were lacking is a design management system. And remember, you know, in the middle of our little OPEX model, the number one principle, plan, do, check, act, in its basic format. So if you can design a management system, actually design one, so write down all the detail of all the management activities we need to do at each level of the organization, and what are the process performance results we want, and uh, the actual end results that we want, if we can write that down, agree it, and design it for each level, do you think that would be better? Well, that's what we're trying to do in GKN. Yeah. First of all is the planning activities. How are we doing that? We heard a great one in Jaeger there and how they do that. Yeah. And we're doing similar stuff, and I'll go into that in a minute. Doing the work. So even at an exec level, we still do work activities, believe it or not. We don't just go to meetings. Yeah. There are some work processes we have to get involved in, signing capex and so forth like that. Check act on process results and performance, and check act, more importantly, on people and process development. Yeah? And uh, when we went through the process of uh, generating this, and I started off with the exec team in GKN, and... Uh, what we did is we did several workshops, and we used these titles here, and we just wrote down all of the management activities that we thought were important yeah, under these titles here, under planning, process, do, uh, check act on process performance, and check act on people development. Yeah? We started off with nine pages, so it's a fair old list, yeah? And then uh, with a bit of coaching, we got that down to three. And I think uh, what I learned from that we agreed this is the document that we came up with. Yes, it's uh, about three sides now. They hate doing detail. Management don't do detail. Yeah? And when you nail them on the who, what, where, when, why, how of that, yeah, they don't like it. And you've got to really get them, sort of nail them in a room, lock them away, and design that management system. And it's not the piece of paper that counts, yeah? It's the fact you've had that discussion, that debate, and you've agreed and prioritised what are the management activities that are important now. So, so we've got that. So if you join our exec team now, you know what's important. You know what the activities are on planning, doing, checking, acting, yeah? For the first time ever. Before that, we had no idea. Certainly when I joined, I had no idea, yeah? So we've gone through this process, and we're refining it all the time. We're changing it yeah, as we learn more. So that's good. So some of the uh, elements that we're sort of uh, defining, and starting off with the, uh, the management system, is the planning bit. And you've heard from Jaeger how they do this. We do use an X matrix. We started off. Uh, and how we do that, we start off with the uh, GKN goals uh, for planning. We have uh, a company five strategic points. We take them and we say, what does that mean to land systems? We put some measurable goals against them for five years. And then we break that down and say what we're going to work on next and put some one-year goals down. And then we develop the tactical plans, starting to use A3s to do that. Break that down. And we come up with the expected contribution from those plans, which is the last bit. And this is a picture of our X matrix for the uh, division in 2014. We went through that process. And you can see the blue bit is the goal setting. Those goals are passed to everybody in the organization and shared through that. And we're getting better at communicating those goals. We're not perfect. So the goals stay the same for everybody. And I think to answer someone's question from the workshop before, then we have different levels of improvement activity. So we'll have a uh, divisional level plan for the things that are so important it needs divisional support or resource. You'll have functional level plans to support the goals, and then you'll have site level plans to support the goals. And that's all done in a catch-ball way, and we're starting to use A3 to do that. 
So it's great having a strategy. You have an X matrix there. It's great making it all clear. But it doesn't mean you're going to get it executed. And uh, I think we had an illusion that you needed to be spot to come up with a good plan here. Yeah? Yeah, but, but you do actually need a scientific method. I think Mark uh, showed you that scientific method this morning. We showed it to you in our workshop a little bit as well. And uh, we also heard it from Jaeger. Using the a freeze is a scientific method. But you've also got to have a robust planning process to show you how to use that scientific method, yeah? And we have a continuous improvement planning process that takes you through the steps of taking those goals, yeah, doing the analysis, and then what do you need to plan into your daily activities and what do you need to plan into sort of breakthrough project activities. And we have a whole process now to do that. We also use a freeze, and I'm not going to go into all the details of a freeze, but more about why we use them, yeah? There's some real learning. This was a big key learning for our guys on using A3s, and this is the first time some of the senior execs have ever used them, and they're connecting it to strategy now. So we needed to get them to understand why they needed to use them. So first of all, it shows your thinking behind how you're going to close the gap on your goal. And I'll just uh, zoom on. I'll come back, come back in a minute. This is our continuous improvement plan at the moment. Yes, this is our breakthrough activities at a divisional level. And this is a stolen from Nissan. It's a what they call a master schedule chart. And you can see it's uh, planned versus actual. These off our X matrix, these are the projects that were on the side. OK. This is the uh, planned versus actual performance. And you can see there's a lot of red there. Why was there a lot of red, you think? And these are all senior execs that are in charge of these projects. Why do you think they're all red? Too busy firefighting, but why did the plans not come to? These are senior execs. They've got all the resources. They can ask for everything, yeah? Hmm? Didn't buy into it. Well, it's their own plan, so why do you think they failed? Hmm? Do you think they did a good job of planning? What didn't, th what didn't they use? which Jaeger have just showed us that they use. What didn't they use? What's the number one lean skill they should have used? Problem solving. So we made a plan on sand, because we hadn't really done the analysis. We hadn't broken down the problem. We haven't created plan versus actual targets for each month, because we hadn't put the thinking behind it. In fact, some of them just made the numbers up going across the top. Yeah. Johnny Ball management, yes, there you go, yeah. And they thought that was good enough to just make up the numbers on what the target should have been. No real thinking or analysis behind it, yeah. So we just had a reflection a couple of months back. Every project was the same. We didn't understand the resources. We didn't understand the targets properly and what we had to do and what were the real actions, yeah. So remember, you know, that's part of the learning curve for my exec team, you can't plan on sand. You've got to have a scientific method to narrow down what are the actions and what's the expected contribution. Yeah? Also, it's a great method for coaching others, isn't it? We're going to give someone the problem. Yeah? So I'm, I'm the exec. You're going to give someone a problem, and you're going to coach them through that problem without giving them the answer. And when they come back to you with better thinking about that and a better plan than you could, you've done your job as a coach. Yeah? So that's another great learning curve. A lot of these guys were frightened to death that they had to be the process experts or the champion. Yeah, they don't. They've got teams to do that. They've got project leaders. So it's a great method to get the organization engaged in the problem solving. So going back to this, yeah, so quickly with our breakthrough activities now, yeah, it takes five minutes to review that now in our exec team meetings. Yeah? Before, we never even looked at the continuous improvement plans. We probably did that once or twice a year at that level. Now we do it every month. It takes five minutes. We can talk about the problems. The execs say, what are we doing to get back on track now when we're red? Do they need support? If it's a complex problem, they'll have to show their A3 on that now to get back. But it takes five minutes. Now, if we're in a site level, we do the same thing. 
And uh, at a site level now, what we're asking the, uh, them to do is rather than having all these meetings that are sat in reviews, going through detailed project plans, that's not what we're asking. In fact, we're, not, we're banning continuous improvement plan meetings. Yeah? What we're doing now, you have a five minutes review and we'll go to the project team that's a green first and congratulate the team for going on track, give them some recognition. Then we'll go to the red teams and uh, we'll ask them about what do they need to improve? What support do you need from us? So now that takes five minutes. Before, we would have spent hours trying to go through all the continuous improvement plans. What a complete waste of time. You are taking away the responsibility of the project leader when you do that. Uh, so now we've got a method for senior management where we can check out quickly. OK. Remember, the uh, next problem we had to solve is having defined work processes. And I won't go into this in great detail. Dan's mentioned it a lot. So we're redesigning our processes with the customer in mind now. We have a process model for our division to do that. We have supporting management processes defined in the organization as well. We're working our way through. Currently, I'm working on the inquiry to order process, our RFQ process. And what we have for the first time, this will be the first time, it's a global process where we have a key business process leader permanently and a key business process team. And their job is to not only improve the process, but problem solve it as well as a global team. And they'll be on that permanently. Not full time, they'll meet and review, but at least now we've got structure supporting the process and not the function. Okay? So that's what we're trying to do with our processes. Next area that we need to improve in our management system is the check out bit. And this was a real uh, sort of uh, breakthrough moment for some of the senior management. They didn't understand the difference between breakthrough activity and daily performance activity and improvement. And uh, if you've read all the books, you'll know that we need to do breakthrough activity yeah, to get us up to the next level. We also need to do daily continuous improvement. We need to do both of those activities. So we need a system that can cope with both of them, and we need to get senior management to understand what their role is in supporting that system. OK, remember the triangle and what people's roles are? So we need to design a system that check acts on that. And uh, these are some of the examples. So when we talk about the levels in the organization, we have now tried to design our KPIs from top to bottom to be linked in the organization, and the method of reviewing them is appropriate for, the uh, for where you are in the organization. So as a team member, you're going to have your PVD, which no doubt you guys have, yeah, and their daily EI team. Yeah, we have the SMAC Center, remember that, the Management Action Center at a site level. And then we have an A3 summary report at the senior management. My senior executive team are not going to stand in front of an obeyer board. Yeah? The main reason is, is that they go to a different plant every month. So unless we've got one we can put in a kit bag, it's not going to happen. Yeah? So we use an A3 summary report to do that review instead. And so this is a SMAC centre at a site level, and it's just the same as Jaeger guys that we've seen today. And we do that as a stand-up meeting, review performance. Are we winning or are we losing? What's the problem escalation? What's the time frame we're going to solve those problems in? And what's the check act to that? Same at a divisional level. So this is what the exec team members have to bring in. This is the example of the operations one. And in here, uh, it's got a summary report at the top of where we are with the customer, where we are with performance. See the grey boxes? That's our management system. Did we do the management activities that we should have done? And that's the check on it. So now we're checking on the people systems. The middle box is our key KPIs, and we started off with about 80 or 90 of them. We managed to get down to six, yeah, which was quite good. The division one, I think, has about nine. Uh, when, they, uh, when they come to the exec team meeting now, uh, the functional uh, guys, my peers, uh, they have to submit that report three days before. People have to read it. When they come into the meeting, they are only allowed to uh, talk through the, the uh, key points. So we have no PowerPoint now in our exec meetings. Ooh, that took a while. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't have any PowerPoint in our performance review now. So they have to bring in the sheet. They didn't like bringing in pieces of paper but we got used to that in a bit. And uh, they're only allowed to read through the key points. They are not allowed to tell war stories. Yeah? They only stick to the key points. And more importantly, the most important section is here. 
which is the problem solving, and we're still not great at this, but most of it now is saying, this is what the results are saying, this is what the problems are, where are we with the problem solving? And when it gets a complicated problem, we're getting behind on it, like some of the reds there, they have to present their A3 and where they are with it. So what support do you need? At the bottom there, the last section, yeah, is the risk. We, we never used to do risk analysis, really. We used to put it into a system once a year and never really review risks. Now we do it every month. So what are the actions? What are we mitigating? And then the follow-up points. So that's the check act on performance for senior executives. That's how we do it now. So we slim down all the reporting, all into one page. So remember that two-day meeting I talked about? So now we do performance in the morning. It takes about two and a half hours to get through everybody because we have nine people to do that from. Yeah, and then we go into the CI plan that I showed you before. That's the breakthrough bit. So now we do it in less than a day, whereas before we didn't even cover three item agendas in two days. And you know what we do on our second day now? We do go see. Or we do a strategic review of our products. So now we've got a design system, and we can do that because we use some lean tools to do it. OK, so the last area that I'm going to talk about is the people development. Yeah, And uh, this is a real struggle. Uh, when we said leadership standard work, most people had a complete melt meltdown. Yeah? Standard work for leaders, you can't standardize what I do, I'm very important. Yeah. Well, remember when we were going through that designing our management activities and it came to process and people development under the title, yeah, and we started to list down all the activities. Well, actually, we didn't have any activities. We virtually had no activities on people and process development from the senior guys. They were all just check acting on performance and not spending the time developing people. So... People don't just magically make this up. So we've had to put in some minimum expectations on leadership about what is their leadership standard work for go see. Uh, what is their leadership standard work for people and process development? Because we've found in GKM yeah, that people, you know, we have some good leaders that do this naturally. Other leaders do not. And if you don't set the minimum expectations, then they will not do it. And then we don't get our people developed. So as a leader, what is that minimum expectation? So here, I'm sorry, it's a lot of detail up here. And this just shows you some of the detail of the go-see for a plant leader. This is, if you join our division now, this is what is expected of you as a leader, the bare minimum of what you've got to do and join in for go-see. Some of our leaders naturally did that, and it's great, and they love it, and it's not a problem for them. Others did none of that. So now when you join, at least you know what you're supposed to be doing and what go see is. One of those activities uh, is the team working, which we explained in our group. Uh, remember that we didn't have a deep understanding of uh, some of our tools and techniques, so we needed to have a different approach, getting away from training. We had eight years of training, and it didn't get us deep understanding. Yeah? So we needed a different approach. And uh, David, in the workshop, explained our team working approach which is basically taking one item off that continuous improvement plan we talked about, okay, putting it on an A3, and then going through a process, a peer coaching process, yeah, of going through the steps of the problem solving with peers from other leaders in other areas, yeah, and then learning by doing, actually doing the actions off the A3 together and helping the sites to do that, reflecting on it and sharing it out. And we have a full process for that. And if you come to the workshop tomorrow, we'll take you through it. Yeah, Dave will. To enable us to do that, you saw some of the tools in the, in the workshop. And Mark will have also taken you through the problem-solving steps. So we've got some problem-solving experts now. You know, problem-solving is the number one skill that we need to have. Yeah? So we spent a lot of time and a lot of effort putting a lot of tools and techniques and training together around this. Yeah. Uh, and if you go to the workshop tomorrow, another selling point, you'll be able to see this evaluation tool. So some of you guys used that today. Did anybody find it useful? Come on, give us some feedback. Yes, yeah, yeah, found it useful. Yeah, it's a good coaching tool. It helps leaders coach people through those steps. 
It's good to reflect on for yourself and your own knowledge. Yeah, so it's another tool that we help leaders use for problem solving. And it's been really effective. And hopefully you can experience that if you come to the workshop tomorrow. Okay, we've got good results from this uh, team working approach. Yeah? And this is a uh, leader, Andre, in our German plant. He's never done this before. He's been going through the problem solving steps uh, and he's sharing his learning out with other leaders now. Yeah? And they're getting deep understanding because they're able to ask a lot better questions. Yeah? It's not a training environment, it's a doing environment. He's now gonna go and do the activity, as you can see, with the people straight after. So we talk about the problems, we get the actions, and then we go and do and we get the deep understanding, and then we reflect and do the learning afterwards. So what have we got from that one approach on that leadership standard work? Yeah, well, we've got good results from it. This is a quarterly report that we do, that we send to senior management and the different levels of management in the organisation. Uh, we focused our improvements first on quality and delivery, really basic for us in our division. Remember, we're still working on stability. And just within the quarter, you can see that we've improved our quality and delivery. That's just this year. Why? Because we've caught one problem and we did it really well. And we coach people through it. More importantly, this is a graph showing the, uh, using that evaluation form. So the grey bars here are the evaluation scores for the problem solving thinking from those leaders at the beginning. And the green bars are where they are now. We've improved their problem-solving capability. Why is that so important? Come on, we're nearly there. One last question. Why is that so important? Especially for these leaders that we've involved in. In, in harmony there, yeah. Because they're going to coach everybody else. We are not Toyota. We're starting at the beginning, yeah. Their job, they're the future leaders that are going to coach everybody else in this, yeah? So it's important we get their capability up, yeah? And that deep understanding. This isn't a 10-minute training course, yeah? They're having to go through it deeply and share with each other, yeah? And that's where we get real learning from. And if you listen to Ian during the workshop, he'll explain that on his journey and what he went through. Okay, so summary. We had an operational excellence model. We had a set of lean principles, yeah. But without a management framework around that and using the lean tools, we'd achieve very little, you know. I was sat in my ivory tower in the group uh, sort of lean. We'd done lots of training and thinking the world was great. Jumped into a division. And then you really realised the fact that we hadn't given management the support. We hadn't put the discipline and structure in place we needed. We hadn't put a policy deployment process in place or it wasn't robust enough. You know, and there's no check act to support people with, yeah? So I think what I want to you to leave about is what is your management? Could you write down what your management system is today? Could you do that? And is it linked to every level? Does it support each level of the organisation or is it just functional silos? that aren't connected, that aren't supporting each other, yeah? I think the last one is... So how, how do we do it in the same way across many cultures, different... Con yeah. uh, well, the truth is we're still working on that one, yeah? So whatever I've said up there is our journey. Are, are we perfect? Have we got all that in place in, in our... In my division, 35 sites? No. You know, it, it takes time. My issue is we need to start off with the exec team first, yeah? I had to start with the executives when it's a management system. If you have not got them designed and understood what's important, then how can the rest of it work, yeah? So they've got to be asking. So actually, I've spent the last year and a half focusing on the executive team and getting them doing that and learning them. Now we're doing it in the operations. So we designed the uh, operations... Uh, system, which is the one that I waved up in front of you, the piece of paper here. So that's the design of the operations one, that's their KPI sheet, that's their summary sheet for their MDs, that's their weekly flash report. All that before was not designed, they all did it differently in each site and it wasn't connected. Yeah. So we're going through that process now, uh, done it for one of the functions, I'm just about to do it in sales, I'm not sure how much that 
of a challenge that is, making a management system that's connected to the executive one for sales, I'm sure. Maybe I need some help from you guys on that, yeah? Maybe it'll be easy, I don't know. But we're working our way through that. Uh, I think it's the, uh, the team working that Dave uh, puts together has also uh, been a good coaching mechanism to educate people on this and what a management system is and talk them through it. But we are basically going top down on this, yeah? because we have to, it's connected. So we start off with the senior leaders, that's driving the behaviors of the next leaders down, they're getting a line, and we're letting each level of leadership coach the next level down on it. So they, them, are a part of it. So we didn't launch it out in one big bang, we're doing it one level at a time and trying to get it right. <laughs>